So today we're going to talk about arrays. Um, just as an overview, we're going to start with like an analogy to um, get the concept across. Um, and then we will go over um, high level, sort of like how to access and um, edit the array contents, that kind of stuff. And then we'll do an actual example in the course. So we'll start off with what is an array, right? An array is an allocation of memory uh, where you can basically put a bunch of things of the same type in. So if you think about this um, from an analogy perspective, we can think of it as like a neighborhood, right? So in a neighborhood, you would have a bunch of houses, right? Um, do something like this. Uh, and for the sake of the analogy, we're going to say this is a street that only has houses on one side. Um, and your addressing will start at zero, right? So if you're, for example, like a postman and you want to drop off a package at house three, then you need to like look at the address, make sure that you're delivering to the right house. So um, in these houses, you have, you know, the contents, right? So you have something like, let's say this is a string array, right? So the contents of the array will be all strings. So we can I don't know, do something like uh, Fred is in house zero, in the first house, right? Um, George. And then Mary. So this is a string. Uh, each of these strings are placed in the array, right? So when we talk about addressing, right? Um, the big thing, important thing to remember is again that addressing for array starts at zero, right? So we have house zero, house one, house two, house three, and house four, right? And so let's call this array, right? This, we'll call this array like main street or something. So this main street array, um, if you want to, you know, get the contents of the spot in the main street array at address two, then that would be getting carried, right? So now if we want to look at something a little bit more, less visual, more like written down word type thing, um, we can, look at something like this, right? So we have, first we have, so, so the things that you can do with arrays, right? Um, you have to be able to create them. Uh, and we have to place them in a file. It should just be a text file. The code here, which you want to be able to create an array. Uh, you want to be able to um, write to an array. Contents of the array, right? So this is reading. And we want to be able to, something else that's useful is getting the length of the array. Right? So, so these four things, um, if we talk about like syntax wise, right? So if the array name is, we'll say it. So to create an array, um, you use, there's this new keyword, right? So arrays are, you'll, you'll get to this later when uh, you review objects, but an array is an object, right? So anytime you want to create a new object, you would, um, you, you have to use this keyword new. So we do something like new, um, and this is a string array. So we'll do the that goes into the array and then you use these square brackets, which indicates that it is an actual array. Um, and then I believe you have to do parentheses afterwards. Um, let me just double check that. Uh, let's see. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. So you don't actually have to use parentheses. That's for uh, you'll go over constructors and stuff in in objects. But basically, for now, uh, you need the square brackets to indicate this array, and you need um, this new keyword. The other thing that you need to be aware of is that um, arrays are fixed length, right? So when you create them, uh, basically your program will say, uh, I want an, an array, like an allocation of memory of this size. And then it goes into memory and takes that chunk and then gives that to you to use. Um, and so you can't, you can't be like, oh, I want this size, but then actually um, after, uh, like after I realized that I need a different size, like I want to like expand it. Like you can't do that. So you have to give it something like, so this was, let's see, the house example was five houses, right? So this is the like actual size of the house. So even though it starts indexing at zero, um, your length and your your, slot, your size, right? But it's your length of the array is five. So your indexing would go zero, one, two, three, four. So to write to an array, it's the same thing as thinking about like, um, you know, have you have your normal um, variable assignment, which is, is something like x equals two, like that, right? um, or I guess we're using strings, so x equals two. Right? Um, what we want to do with an array is it's the same concept, right? So you think about like, you want to put something into the slot that's there, you can treat the slot like a variable in itself, in and of itself, right? So this is main street, right? So we say main street at the particular slot, let's say, uh, let's see, in the house example, um, our second, our, our house with index two is Harry. So we'll do something like index two, uh, main street at house two or index two. Um, is equal to Harry. Now, from here, this address two, address two. Um, to get the contents of the array, it's sort of a similar thing where you are like addressing into the array so you can treat it like a variable, right? So, so this right here. Um, gives you the thing at address two, right? And then you're assigning it to that. But then in the example where x equals Fred, right? Uh, you can do, to get the contents of x, you would just say like, use x. And you'd like put it into, you know, a variable that you want to use. Let's say like, um, when one, uh, and then you want to assign the variable that's in x, right? So you would do that. But then with the contents of the array, it's a similar thing where you would say like string um, one right, is equal to, and then you can say main street at two. And so this main street at two will return Harry because it's been assigned Harry right here. And it'll be put into this string and you can use chosen one however you want. Um, you can also just use this directly in, if you were trying to do it, you have to be aware that, um, it's just it's a an easier, more straightforward thing to separate out variables at the moment um, by assigning it like this. The last thing is getting the length of the array, right? And so arrays, like other objects, which you'll again cover in I think module five, um, are ha they have properties and they have methods, right? You do something like math.pi, right? And pi is a well, pi happens to be something in the library. I guess that's not a good example. Um, well, so what you need to know is that length is a property of an array. It's not a method. And so because you're using a property, you can do um, the array name, which is main street, right? Dot length, right? And normally if it was a method, you would use parentheses. Um, but because it's a property, you would just use dot length. And this expression in and of itself will return the length. And in this case, it's returned five because main street is of size five. So let's um, do an actual example here. Uh, let's see, clips. Okay. 
So we're going to put all this stuff together, right? So let's say we want to um, create this array of houses that we just made, right? So we'll we'll do something where we actually create it, right? So string, this is going to be a string array, and we're going to say um, main street new string array of size. Right? And so this is giving me an error or a warning because um, but now, so this right here has allocated this. Um, I believe that with strings, when you initialize the, uh, when you first allocate this right here, it defaults all the contents of the array to empty strings. And with int arrays, it does it, it like, uh, it defaults everything to zero. Um, so that's good to know. Um, the next thing that we want to do is we want to actually like fill this array, right? Because it's currently not filled with the stuff that we want. So we can do this manually. Um, we can say main street uh, at zero. Right? So this is the first slot uh, is equal to, and we just pull up the, so our zero is Fred. Um, and we can do this for everything else. One, two, four. Right. Our second one is George. Right. So you can do this manually like this, right? Um, the thing that I would caution you is that you know if your array is, let's say a hundred, the size a hundred, right, and you have a hundred things to fill. This is probably not the most efficient way to do things. Now, if it's random, you know, like like it's just a bunch of names that you're throwing in, um, it's a little difficult to automate that process or to put things into a set of code like for loop to uh, to initialize that uh, cleanly. It's much easier to do with integers, um, but it's you know mixing up integers and indices is a little confusing. So we're sticking with string with strings right now. So this. Right now, at this point in the code, at line 12, after line 11 has been executed, um, Main Street is now filled with all of the names that we had in the original example. So now we want to be able to read these, right? Um, so something that might be good to do is to print all of these out, right? So um, this is something that we can do with a for loop. When all of this has been propagated, we can do a normal for loop int i equals zero, i is less than something, right? And then i plus plus. And what this i indicates here is actually the address that we're going to be at at each point. And so um, what we can do is say, you know, we can make this a little bit clearer. But basically this for loop is gonna take on at each iteration a value, an address value of the array that we're going through. And so because this is the case, we're starting at zero, right? So it's going to start at zero and we want it to go, because we're incrementing, we want it to go zero, one, two, three, four, which it'll do. And so we want to put a limit on this, right? Um, four right now is our limit, right? We have size five. And so what we can do is we can say something like main street dot and what, what this does basically is um, the index will, you know, again, take on values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This statement is executed at the end of the loop, right? So we have at the point where index equals 4, then it'll execute something, right, with, with index 4, and then it'll increment index again to be 5, and it comes back around, checks this condition, and then, oh, 5 is not less than uh, the length, which is five, right? And so we can use this is less than array.length um, sort of format to use a for loop to go through all of the contents of the array. And so the way that this works is that um, because we're, we're, we want to print uh, basically all of the contents of the array, um, at each spot we would want to, and we'll break this out to make it a little bit clearer, uh, but we'll do we'll say like a variable, right? So strings is like uh, current uh, 
uh, name, right? And this is, we'll set this equal to main street at the index value that the iteration is currently on, right? And so once we have the current name, then we can print that out and say system.out and we will do current name, right? Um, and because we're using print, it'll be all on the same line instead of uh, print ln, which will uh, print everything out um, and then do a new line. So if that's the case, we should probably separate them face or comma or something. And then, cool. let's try this. Um, and then run this and see, so with index zero, it'll come out, it'll give the current name value uh, to be at index zero, which is Fred, print out Fred and a comma, right? And we notice that there's a comma at the end. Um, there's a way to fix this where if you um, basically say like on the last iteration, you don't want to print a comma, right? So you can do something like an if statement um, that basically checks if you're in the last iteration, um, which is happens to be where index equals uh, main street dot length minus one. Um, but we can do that in another video that's a little bit complicated. Uh, hopefully this helps. Um, if you have any more questions, feel free to come to the professor uh, professor party line, um, and we'd be happy to explain this a little bit more, uh, go into more depth, or do some more examples. Cool.